you guys noticed there was food over there. Jens mentioned uh, IBM Watson cognitive cooking. So what we've done is, the food is actually a Turing test. There is two risottos and two Brussels sprout dishes. One risotto was made by IBM Watson. The other risotto was made uh, by the catering company that we've hired. Get your vote ready as to which is the one made by a computer. the first time the class is being taught, and it's not really based on any other classes that are out there, so it was like built up from scratch. And most classes on AI are really for people who are gonna build AI systems, but if you're the CEO or a deputy mayor or anyone, you're not really ever gonna build a system. You wanna have a strategic and deployment understanding of it. And so we really spent a long time trying to not, not even build a class, but to ask the question, what is it that needs to be known by a person who's gonna be in strategy or deployment, and then to build a class around that. I think it's The risotto I think I can tell, but the Brussels sprouts I cannot tell. Mm -hmm. The risotto, I'm afraid now I remember. So oh no, don't tell us, Stephen. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> so you think it's the yellow one? The food is a very tangible way to make sense of how AI can look. So IBM Watson, they had a little side project called Cognitive Cooking. And Cognitive Cooking was they absorbed all the recipes that they could find. And then the algorithm used that database of recipes to come up with new recipes that had never been done before. Most of the discussion in AI is so abstract. To see it in something so physical as food, something you can taste, I think that'll be kind of an interesting experience. I'm actually curious to see whether they'll be able to guess which one was real, which one was made up by the computer. I thought the white risotto was AI. It had like a lemon flavor to it, which was maybe a little strange. So for the, um, the risottos, I thought it was the second one, the white one. I thought it didn't look as appealing, and I thought a human would probably put more emphasis on making it look appealing. For the risotto, I thought the one that is aggressively yellow is definitely made by the AI. All right, Jens, which think, one did you think it was? I think on the risotto, it's very clear. Risotto number two is the human, risotto number one is the AI. I also thought the saffron was a dead giveaway. I thought. The Brussels sprouts, I have no idea. It wasn't the, I actually thought the one that I thought was Watson tasted better. I thought it was very nice, the saffron one. That, oh, you like that better? I mean, you don't like saffron, but I like saffron. I thought it was nice. It had such an unusual flavor, like it's not something that I've ever eaten before, so that made me think that it must like be some you know very what? unusual. Which Brussels sprout had grapes? I'm pretty sure the Brussels sprout with grapes was Watson. I guess we'll find out momentarily. We'll find out. The students have been working uh, most of the semester on trying to come up with their own pitch of a particular thing. They've worked in teams about five to seven, and this, the posters we see behind us are the posters that they put together to make their pitch. It's actually pretty impressive, all the really interesting things that people have come up with in such a short amount of time. This class covers, I think, everything you would need to know if you're the head of a division and you want to go to your data science team and say, hey, here's a problem that I think would be perfect for AI. You want to be able to find the right problem. If you're thinking of being an entrepreneur and you're looking at what are the places where AI is going to be useful, you want to be able to know, oh, here it would be very valuable, here it would not. So we have the vote results up. Oh, really close. But one people thought was the AI one. Do you want to tell us, Raf? Which one it is, yeah? This one. Oh, all right, all right, pretty good. All right, risotto one is the AI one. Wisdom of the crowds on display, except for 42% of you. All right, <laughs> let's look at uh, Brussels sprout two. Oh, everybody was sure it was Brussels sprout one was the AI one. Which one is it, Raf? Oh, really? The wow, grapes were... the crowd nailed it. The grapes so, were human grapes. So one, <laughs> so one wow. was in fact the AI composed one. So I definitely don't have the kind of background where I'm ever gonna be actually creating and programming AI algorithms. But I think this class has done a great job of teaching me how to work with the people who will be creating those. I'm a policy student, so it was really interesting to just um, get a perspective from the business side and like, you know, also the policy side. Giving us that um, analytical lens on, you know, how to actually view technology, it was really helpful and I just really enjoyed the class overall. I came in with a very basic understanding, probably less than average, about the actual applications of AI. So it, to me, it's really like opened my um, like vision to the different um, eras of potential application and how I could potentially in my path that is not necessarily AI specific, bring it you know, with me and, and apply it for some future use. 
being the leaders in educating leaders who know a lot about AI, that area is completely up for grabs. I think every business school, policy school is going to try to figure out how to do that. I think that in three years, uh, we will be in a position to have the best MBAs doing AI uh, at the university because I think classes like this, work like this, I think it's going to quickly take off and I think like, you can already see the students here, they're excited by the topic and so I think that we're in a position to really transform how the MBAs can use this technology.